Hi everyone, this is Larry Trexler. Thanks for tuning in where we're gonna talk a little bit about sound dampening products for your vehicle. When we talk about collision repair and we're also, you know, we're always talking about replacing panels. Well, a lot of times what's behind those panels is just as important as what you see on the outside of those panels. And that would be the sound dampening products. When we talk about sound dampening, there's a lot of different types of products we're talking about. So come on over here, let me show you. First of all, you have sound dampening products that are on the outside of the vehicle, such as this coating that you would typically see on the bottom of a rocker panel for cars like a Honda Civic and Honda Accord. You also see sound dampening products like rigid foams that are applied up inside large cavities. So you have both of those. And then of course, when we think about products like flexible foam products, you think of areas where you have a skin that sits down on top of a substructure. And in this particular case, we're talking about a hood, so you can actually see the little pucks of the flexible foam that's, that's down inside of there. And then likewise, when we reach over here to a door skin, we also see the same thing. When you put a, replace, a, a replacement skin, and this is a, a skin that we use in our museum area, but when you replace this door skin, you've got what's called the intrusion beams that run along the inside of the door. That intrusion beam is there for a side impact. Well, you can tell there's just a very little gap between this skin and that extrusion beam, so or the intrusion beam. So with that, you have these little pucks from the factory that come with flexible foam. And in a lot of cases, we'll replace them with flexible foam or another product that we have that's called panel vibration control material. So now that we've seen them, we'll get back over there and we'll talk a little bit more in detail about what those products are for SIM. So when it comes to sound dampening products, SIM manufactures four different types. We have our first one here that is called Sound and Seal Sprayable Coating. Now Sound and Seal Sprayable Coating was the product that we just showed you on that rocker panel that's actually sprayed on the exterior of the rocker. And when we manufactured Sound and Seal, we developed it specifically for those Hondas, uh, the late model Honda Civics and the Honda Accords. But as soon as we launched this product, we also started getting a lot of phone calls from customers saying, hey, it's, this is the same product that you see up inside the fender well area of some of your Toyotas, especially the SUVs. It looks like rubberized undercoating, but if you press your finger on it and it's spongy, then that would be a Sound and Seal replacement product. Virtually every car in the industry, when you pull the carpet up in the trunk pan area, you'll see what looks like five little short beads of seam sealer just out in the middle of nowhere. It's not even on a seam. That's a sound dampening product. If you press your finger on it and it's spongy, it's gonna be sound and seal. And that's what that product was developed to do. So sound and seal has a lot of uses in the collision repair industry. Likewise, we also have our foams. We have a flexible foam and we have a rigid foam. And then obviously the difference between the two is how spongy one is compared to the other once they've been cured. When you think about flexible foams and where they're used, you're gonna use those in areas where, you know, panels have a little bit of movement to them, particularly things like door skins and roof skins. So those roof skins, when you get them outside in the sun, they're gonna expand and they're gonna contract. So you need to have a product if you're gonna put it in there that, that actually controls that flutter. And that's what some people call this as an anti-flutter foam. But you have to have something that has a little bit of, of movement to it as well. Because if you don't, when that, ex that roof skin expands, it's gonna actually pull the pucker mark on the door on the, the roof, and you're gonna be able to see where you have that product if you use a rigid foam. So that is why we have flexible foam for those areas. Once again, a lot of people call these anti-flutter foams. And then we have rigid foams. Rigid foams you would never use in those uh, applications we just spoke of. You use rigid foams to fill large voids. So things like your rockers, things like pillars, uh, your posts on a vehicle. If, the, if there's a rigid foam that came in that from the factory, then that's what you're gonna put back in there. Because of where it's at, it's not necessary that it has to remain flexible as long as it gets in there and it can fill that void up and actually control or dampen the sound, that's what a rigid foam is designed to do. And then last but not least is our product that's called Panel Vibration Control Material. Panel Vibration Control Material was made 
to basically take the place in a lot of applications where maybe using a flexible foam was a difficult uh, product to use. And the reason you'll see this in a moment when we do our demonstrations, flexible foam and rigid foam both are liquid products and they're pretty runny. So if you're trying to put this in a, in a particular spot and you don't want it to kind of seep down the panel, then you would actually come back in with the panel vibration control material and that's what you saw on that door skin earlier, those little pots. The best part about panel vibration control is that when you put it down, it gives you an hour of working time. So traditionally, when you're replacing a door skin, you would have actually replaced a new skin on the door and then had to flip it over and then reach in there behind the window regulator to put the flexible foam in. With panel vibration, you can do that all ahead of time. So no need in having to wait until afterwards and try to get it into a difficult area. Panel vibration just makes it that much easier. So we're gonna start by showing you a couple of different uh, demonstrations with each one of these products. And we're gonna start with the sound and seal product. Now, not to ruin anything, we're gonna actually have a separate video that actually talks about our sprayable attachment and how you spray sound and seal. So make sure that you tune into that video so that you can actually see how we do that. But I'll at least show you a different, couple of different beads that we can lay down with this product. First, we wanna make sure and always equalize and purge the cartridge. things that you're going to notice with sound and seal and like our seam sealers that have that really heavy body to them sound and seal is going to have a little bit of movement to it so as I start to lay this down you're going to see the ripple that I'm going to put in it and you'll actually be able to see it flow as well sound and seal you've got about 10 minutes to work with this product and then it's going to usually be set up between 15 sometimes 20 minutes depending on the temperature and when the the difference between sound and seal and a seam sealer is that when this is dry and you press on that it's going to remain spongy and that is what's so different it's the only product on that on the market that was developed to duplicate not only the the look of that rocker panel that we were talking about but also, also the sponginess that you see with that product as well. So that's sound and seal. The next product we're gonna jump to is going to be panel vibration control material. And one of the things that we like to talk about with panel vibration control material is the, is the fact that this product, we refer to it as a non-expandable foam. So unlike flexible foam, which if you happen to back it into a corner, it's gonna do what it's supposed to do, which is gonna expand. And sometimes that can be an issue if you do back it into that corner, it can actually push out on the door skins. So panel vibration control material doesn't do that. It doesn't expand, it's not gonna contract on you. So to show you what I'm talking about with that,
What you put down is what you're gonna get. It's not gonna push up on that static mixer insert. It's not gonna put, pull it down either. You just put down what you need. And the best advice I can give you, especially when you're using a product like Panel Vibration, is when you're using it on a situation like a, a door skin, for instance, when you're cutting the old door skin off, try to cut and leave as much of the OEM foam on that intrusion beam. And then when you're ready to apply, the, getting ready to put the, the new door skin back on, just take uh, the panel vibration control material and just use it as a skim coat on top of that foam. And it just makes things a lot easier because now you're using a product, you're trying to keep as much of that OEM product on there as possible. You're just using the panel vibration control material to glue it all back together again. So it's very simple. And then the next part is we're gonna do some quick demonstrations with the flexible foams and the rigid foam. Now, with that, I think probably the best example I can give you here is to come in and actually um, put the same amount of product in both of these mixing cups. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 10 pumps with a manual applicator and put it in each one of these and you'll be able to see the difference. Now, the other thing while we're doing this is to talk about just a few things. Foams are one of the few products that we have in the line that you actually do not want to leave the static mixer on it when it's done, like you would a seam sealer. And the reason for that is because it foams. If you do not remove the static mixer immediately after you're finished using the product, then what's gonna happen is, is the foam that's in that static mixer that's mixed is gonna push itself back down inside the tube. And if you lay this tube over to the side, it will actually push the pistons in the back out of the back of the tube. So for that reason, you do need to make sure and remove the old static mixer. And if you remember from one of our other videos, we talked about taking the little caps that we snap off of here and how you can actually wiggle these things back in and use them as a cap. This is one of those products where you're gonna utilize that uh, procedure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pump 10 pumps of flexible foam in this container. And as you'll be able to see with the flexible foam, it doesn't take hardly any time at all before it starts to expand. So that is our flexible foam product. The, maybe I should have shown you this before I put the cap on, another little trick that you can do with this. A lot of people always ask, well, what if I am gonna use a flexible foam and I need to put it on a and I need to put it on a vertical surface. You know, obviously you saw how liquidy that product was. So when I try to put it up on a, uh, a van skin, side skin, for instance, it has a tendency to just want to sag down the panel. So here's a little trick that you can use. What you'll do is if you're applying this product, is come in, squirt some of the product up until it gets close to the end of the tube and then stop and then wait for it to start expanding on its own and you'll be able to see it start to move up that panel and as it does then you'll be able to flip it over and start dispensing the product very slowly if you go too fast it's going to make it look really slick and shiny looking and it's going to start getting liquidy again so stop back off of it a little bit and let it do its thing so let me show you what i'm talking about here All right, we're gonna stop it right there and we're just gonna wait for it for a second. And as you can see, it's already starting to move a little bit. So at this point, flip it down and slowly pull the trigger and move 
the, car, uh, the manual applicator. And you can see the difference in the texture. It's already looking like it's bubbling a little bit as it comes out of the end of the static mixer. And that is how you can control it on, this, on a vertical surface. So that was the flexible foam. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the rigid foam. Now, another word of caution here, both of these products are urethane products. So they are isocyanates. So when you first dispense these products, don't try to be over it. Make sure you use good ventilation. Make sure that you're not touching them, touching them with your bare hands. So, 10 pumps. As you can probably already tell, this product is slower to expand and it was really watery, starting to, to move a little bit right now. So that is the rigid foam. So the difference between these two is fairly significant. Reflexible foam is a 10 times expansion ratio. You really don't need it because of the areas where you're using this, you typically don't need it to expand a lot. You're using it to fill slight little voids between a door skin, for instance, and that uh, intrusion beam. But when you think about rigid foams, remember rigid foams, we're using those in areas where you're filling up large voids. So with a rigid foam, you want a product that's really runny. Well, it is that. You want it to, to be delayed in its, in its uh, expansion. It does that as well. But when it expands, you want it to expand as much as you possibly can. And that is why this product has a 20 times expansion ratio with our rigid urethane foam. So when you look at these sound dampening products, you've got sound and seal that is a sprayable coating that you can see on the bottoms of rockers for the Honda Civics, Honda Accords, inside the trunk pan areas and inside rear uh, fender wells. You also have panel vibration control material that we use as a replacement in hard to reach areas where flexible foam is typically what we would use. Panel vibration gives you that one hour of working time so it makes it a lot easier to use in those tight spots. You have flexible foam that you use between the skins of a vehicle where you just have slight little gaps and you don't need a lot of expansion to it, but you need it to still remain flexible. And then of course you have the rigid foam that is gonna be used in large pillars to fill up large voids as a true sound dampening product. So hope everybody learned something. Look forward to seeing you the next time.